namespaces, deployments, services, pods, logs. When dealing with Kubernetes, you have to take care of all those things. But what if, what if I tell you that you can do that and much, much more with just one tool? Stay with me until the end because it's gonna be a cool journey. Hello everyone and welcome back to Coder Dave. Thank you very much for joining me today. This is the second video in a series dedicated to Azure DevOps environment. Before we start, make sure to subscribe to this channel right now. Just click on the subscribe button below and turn on the notifications so you will not miss any other video in this series. In the first video of the series, and you can find the link up here, we've seen how and why you should use Azure DevOps environments together with your YAML pipelines. Today, instead, we will go deeper into it and we will discover the integration between Azure DevOps environments and Kubernetes. The Kubernetes resource is the first one that has been introduced into DevOps environments and therefore is the one providing the most features. Let's see first what we can do with it and then we will see how to set these up. I have one environment created and I can see its status, which comprises also of the pipelines run that has lastly been deployed here. And of course, when that happened, when you click on it, you have two separate tabs resources and deployments. The deployment tab has the same content we've seen in the previous video about environments in general, so I won't spend too much about it. You can find the link to that video in the description. Just real quick, you can see here what has been deployed and when. For example, if I pick the latest one, I can see that this deployment came from the deploy job of this pipeline. You can see it here, which if I click on changes, I know that it included these changes and I have visibility down to the single file diffs. And I also see that all of these were initially planned in the attached work items. Here, for example, a task and a bug. Thanks to the complete integration between all the parts of Azure DevOps, we have full traceability from work item management all the way to deployments and everything in between. But as we've seen last time, this comes with any kind of environment, not just with the Kubernetes ones. So let's see what's unique about the Kubernetes environments. The resources tab is actually where the magic happened. In my case, I have one resource here, which maps to the default Kubernetes namespace. Clicking on that, we have again two other pages, workloads and services. And this is everything my namespace contains. One deployment here called web server, which has this label. So I'm able to see even the label inside Kubernetes. And this deployment has one replica set over here. And I can also see the image that is being associated with those pods. I can see that my deployment consists of three pods and all three pods are up and running. If I click on the replica set, again, I can see all the details about this replica set, the labels and the selectors. But even more amazingly, I can see the actual pods that are running in my cluster. But that's not all, because if I click on any one of these pods, I have here the whole pod details down to the single conditions that are you know, gathered from Kubernetes and even the node where this pod is currently running. And I can see the logs that this pod is producing. And here I have even some errors. So everything is gathered from Kubernetes. And last but not least, I can even see the full YAML that basically is associated with this pod. So here I have basically all the details that matters to me if I'm a developer or if I'm an operator of the Kubernetes or even if I'm the responsible for the deployment. And if we go back to our resource, we also have the services tab. And again, also in here, I have all the services that have been deployed into my cluster. The web service service over here is actually the one I deployed. So I can straight away get the IP address and the ports where this service is running. And when I click on it, I have the full details over here. And of course, the associated pods. So as you can see, we have full end-to-end -end visibility inside our clusters, starting from workloads and services down to the single pods and logs and YAML and anything like that. I love this. It's so useful and having everything on one tool allows you to focus much, much more on what you're doing. Question of the day. How do you deploy to your Kubernetes cluster and how do you monitor it? Let me know in the comment section below. Now that we've explored what we can do with it, Let's see how we can create and set up a new environment for Kubernetes in Azure Pipelines. First of all, obviously, you need to have a Kubernetes cluster. And in my case, I always use AKS in Azure. 
And the reason for this is that it's a managed service and also I don't have to pay for the master nodes, which is a big plus. And using AKS makes also much easier linking a cluster to Azure DevOps. Even though obviously this works with any Kubernetes cluster in any platform and cloud provider. First of all, let's click on the new environment button here in the environment section under pipelines. Let's give the environment a name, secondary, and then select Kubernetes as resource type. Click next. Here you can set whether you want to use AKS or any other Kubernetes cluster. If you go for a generic provider for Kubernetes, then you will need to input all the parameters by yourself and set up your cluster so it's reachable from Azure DevOps. But if you select AKS, you'll get prompt with the selection directly. Select the cluster. In my case, I only have one cluster in this subscription. And finally, select the namespace you want to link. In fact, each resource for Kubernetes maps to a specific namespace in your cluster. I already have an environment linked to my default, so let's create a new one and call it up to namespace. When you're ready, just click on validate and create. And all Azure DevOps will do is connecting to your Azure service, validating your credential, validating your resources and creating your environment for you. This of course works if the account you're accessing Azure DevOps with has the appropriate permissions on your Azure subscription. Since we've just created this environment, it's completely empty. What we have to do is using this environment in a deployment job on our pipeline to have all the goodness we've seen before. But how do we use this new environment in a deployment job? Let's see. Let's go to pipelines. Oh, and here I have a CI CD pipeline that I've never used yet and is not completed. This pipelines looks for changes in the up to YAML file, which has never been deployed yet. And so far only has a CI stage. So let's add a CD stage to it. First of all, just add the stage and set that it depends on the CI stage. Next, we need to add a deployment job. And this is where the magic happens. In fact, we have here this environment close and the format for it is environment name dot namespace. In my case, it's secondary, that is the one we just created, dot up to namespace. Next, and actually last, we need to add the steps for actually deploying to Kubernetes. This is just the normal Kubernetes manifest deployment task from Azure Pipelines. But the beauty of this is that we do not need to specify any service connection, any credentials or anything else. And the reason for this is that the pipeline engine will actually take everything it needs from the environment directly. Let's save this pipeline and make a small change to the up to YAML file. Let's say, for example, that I want my uh, service to respond to port 9090 instead of 90. Let's save and let's stage this change and commit it, new port. And let's also add fixes pound 1139. 1139 is one work item I have in my Azure DevOps boards. Using this notation, will instruct Azure DevOps to link that work item with this change set that we are going to push. And then of course, we'll also link that changes with the pipelines run uh, that will start the whole CI CD. Let's commit this. And finally, let's push it to the remote. This will start the whole CI CD process and bring together all the components, code, work item, test, build and deployment. As you can see here, the deployment is completed and we can actually explore the environments directly from here. We have our secondary environment and if we click on view environment over here, the tool brings us to the environment dashboard. And again, we have everything we've seen before, including the deployments, the one that just happened, and we can see all the changes and all the work items that were connected and if you see here, this is the task 1139, which I connected when I committed. And of course, all of the other tasks come from the previous changes because this is a new, completely new deployment. And so all the other work items have been automatically connected because they were associated with the previous changes. Cool, right? Well, there are cooler things than this, but they are all in the outside world, like the, the real world, you know what I mean. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please hit the like button below and make sure to subscribe and turn on the notifications so you will not miss the other videos in this series. 
Thank you very much for joining me today and see you soon at Quarter Dave.